Today we're going to be learning about and saying the F word a lot. That's right, I'm talking about fasting. But if you can get by some of the preconceived notions, some of the myths, some of the lessons that health educators, including me, have been teaching you over the years, then I think you're going to discover an eating plan that could change your life like it has mine. Hi, Greg Whitmore, Tiny Mountain Wellness. If you're new to my channel, I hope you'll check out my videos and I hope you'll share them like crazy. I've been teaching health and wellness for 28 years now and I'm hoping to share that information beyond my ninth grade classroom. Now in a previous video, I talked about how intermittent fasting cured some of the symptoms of my autoimmune disease. And I'll link that video in the description below. But if you recall, in a simple physical that I was having, my doctor mentioned in, in passing the term intermittent fasting, how it could maybe slow down the aging process, which of course I'm really interested in. And in that process of actually using intermittent fasting, my symptoms for my autoimmune disease disappeared. An added bonus was that I lost over 32 pounds in just three months. I sleep better, less stress. Again, that was last October. It is now June of 2019. So I want to explain what intermittent fasting is and again break some of the myths and misconceptions because again fasting was the F word to me and I've always tried to poke holes into something that I don't really believe in and intermittent fasting is something or fasting is something that I taught my kids was not a good thing. Why? We related it to starvation and not eating and lowered metabolism and just not a good way healthy way for our young people to live. So, so let's break it down. Let's talk about fasting. First of all, let's discuss the F word. Alright, so fasting. What is fasting? Fasting simply means not eating. Okay? Right now, guess what? I'm not eating, so I'm fasting. If you don't have something in your hand or you're not eating right now, you're fasting. We fast every single night when we sleep and yet we're taught the first thing we need to do is break that fast we've said it's the most important meal of the day right because our body has no energy we don't have glucose but I'm going to explain to you that that's not the case it doesn't have to be the most important part of the day and it certainly doesn't have to happen when you wake up so fasting simply means not eating Okay. We either are fasting or eating. Now what does the term intermittent mean? Intermittent simply means that we're doing something at irregular intervals. So in this case, we're fasting at different intervals. It may not be the same every night. And we'll talk about schedules here in a minute. So this could easily be called intermittent eating, right? Because if we're not fasting, we're eating. So we're talking about a fasting window and an eating window and we do that all the time. So I want to take a few minutes to talk about the standard American diet. And that's an appropriate acronym for the standard American diet because it really has been sad. It hasn't served us well. What is the standard American diet? Well, we've been taught over the years that we need to eat three meals a day. Never skip breakfast. Even more recently, we've said it's probably better to eat six smaller meals. And yet, how has the standard American diet helped us? Well, obesity continues to be on the incline. The standard American diet simply has not worked for us, and we have to make a change. But let's start by looking at the standard American diet and what that looks like on a timeline. You know how I like lines. So here's our line. And on this end, this is going to be 6 a.m. and this is going to be 6 a.m. so that represents obviously a 24 hour period let's put in for reference 6 p.m. and we'll even put in noon and midnight so in a standard American diet we've always said you have to eat breakfast so let's say you're an early riser enjoying the standard American diet you get up and you start 
by eating breakfast, usually a sugary breakfast, waffles, pancakes, cereal with milk, juice, could be bagels. Okay, we talked about that in an earlier video. But we start our feeding window or our eating window at 6 a.m. Okay, and oftentimes we tell you to snack so you're eating a 9 a.m. meal. Noon lunch, afternoon snack, a large dinner, and then oftentimes we're still snacking until 9 p.m. So, and hopefully if we can stop by then and not eat during the middle of the night, that is our eating window. Sure, we took little breaks, one hour, two hour breaks in eating, but our blood sugar levels continue to be high, our insulin response tended to be high. I'll talk more about that in the next video. But that made up our feeding window or our eating window. And that's 15 hours. Okay? So we stopped here, stopped eating, so our fasting window started, and that ended up being nine hours till we get back to breakfast the next morning we do it all again. So you can see we're putting food into our body for 15 hours and we're fasting for nine. Now one thing we know is the body is amazing at healing itself if we give it a chance. But as long as we're shoving food into our mouth, our body's not healing. That's why our best healing is done at night when we're sleeping. Why? Not only because some hormones like human growth hormone is produced while we sleep, but it's because we're fasting. We're not putting any food into our body, any unhealthy food or toxins for that matter. So if we wanted to do just one good thing for us, we'd balance this out. And we go 12 hours. Stop eating at 6. So we'd have 12 hours of feeding, 12 hours of fasting. At least we'd be a little bit more in balance and depending on what we're eating, our body would have a better chance to heal itself. But intermittent fasting and the benefits of it is based on extending that fast and compressing that window we eat. It doesn't say it's we reduce calories, we still want to take healthy food in and we still want to take in basically the same number of calories, we just want to shove it into a smaller window. Now when we talk about intermittent fasting schedules, the most common one you're going to hear is a 16-8. That's 16 hours of fasting, 8 hours of feeding. Okay. So what does that look like on the timeline? Well, I do a 16-8 oftentimes, so let's see how it looks for me. Okay? I don't eat breakfast. But Mr. Whitmore, you said breakfast is the most important meal. Yes, I did. That was what I've taught the last 28 years, but I don't teach that anymore. Breakfast means break the fast. And when you start eating after a fast, that is breaking the fast. So we all break the fast. We all eat a breakfast. It's just that it doesn't have to be at 6 a.m. or 9 a.m. We can break the fast any time that's convenient for us. And we'll talk more about that in our next video. But I don't eat breakfast. It's really convenient for me to just wake up, get a cup of black coffee, get dressed, watch the news, read the paper before I go to work. So I oftentimes don't start eating until lunchtime. Okay. So at noon, I might have a lunch. That's when my feeding window starts. And I'll eat until about 8, 8 p.m. I try to be done. Okay? Alright, so that becomes 8 hours of eating. I compress all my calories into 8 hours. Then I start fasting, and that becomes 16 hour fast. Thus, the 16 8 schedule 16 hours of fasting, 8 hours of eating. Now oftentimes I will actually stretch this out and maybe not start till 2 p.m. So now I've actually got a six hour fasting, excuse me, six hour feeding schedule and an 18 hour fasting schedule. That would be an 18-6 and that's been pretty successful for me. So, 
A 16 is the most popular. It can be stretched out to be an 18 6. You can really do anything you want. That's the beauty of intermittent fasting. Uh, you might hear of OMAD, that's one meal a day. I do that sometimes. I'll just eat dinner and try to compress it into a two or four hour window. There's actually 24 hour plus fast, all right? So longer than 24 hours without eating. Our body can handle that just fine. I've often done at least once a week a 24 hour fast. And then every once a month I try to do maybe even a 48 hour fast. I've even done a 72 hour fast and I feel the benefits of reduced inflammation. I feel better stress wise. I sleep better. So we're going to talk about that more in the next video. So in that next video we will talk about the benefits of intermittent fasting. We'll talk more about the schedule of it. We'll talk about how it works and why it works. And then we'll talk a little bit about how you can get started as well. So in the meantime, if you'd like, I want to share a book with you. This is my go-to book when it comes to intermittent fasting. This is the first book I really studied when my doctor mentioned that I should look into intermittent fasting. This is a book called The Complete Guide to Intermittent Fasting. It's by Dr. Jason Fung. Dr. Fung is a nephrologist, which is a doctor of kidneys. So he studied diabetes a lot, and he studied uh, blood sugar, insulin, and that sort of thing, and he found a profound effect with his patients when they did some intermittent fasting. So he breaks intermittent fasting down along with Jimmy Moore, a co-author. So I'll put a link in the description below to this book, but it's a, my go-to book that I often refer to. So I hope you're starting to see the benefits of intermittent fasting. I hope you're starting to get excited about it when you hear that it's worked for me and it's allowed me to stop taking medication for my autoimmune disease. I hope you get excited to hear that I've lost 32 plus pounds using intermittent fasting and if weight loss is a part of something that you want to do, that's great. Better sleep, less stress, more energy, I feel better than ever. So we're going to talk more about that in future videos. Hey, thanks again for checking out my videos. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Tiny Mountain Wellness. Share it with all your friends. The information that I provide is so important. As I've said often in a lot of my videos, we've given you the wrong information when it comes to nutrition. And I want to make it right and get it right. So please share it. Give it a thumbs up if you find some value. Subscribe and also hit that bell notification so you'll know when I put out a new video. Take care. We'll see you in the next video. For more information, go over to my blog at tinymountainwellness.com. We'll see you next time.